Hello and welcome to Women in Ministry TV. I'm Jacqueline Battle, and you've joined me for another week of message to my young self. So if you've been tuning in, you realize that for the past few weeks, I've been talking about subjects from my book. We've gone over chapters one through three. And in chapter one, we reminded everyone that we need to understand Oh my, the purpose of each season. We also talked about in chapter two, we need to ask the right questions. In chapter three, we discuss quantify the value. Well, after chapter three, I've gotten so many calls. I've gotten so many texts and messages and comments pertaining to expounding more. And so what I was doing was giving you brief tidbits, actually the introductions of each chapter, so that when the book became available, you'd be able to be familiar with the book and would already understand why you want to purchase it. I've been asked to give a little bit more information about chapter three, quantify the value. And that's because the book is not available yet. I've done the things that I was told to do by the publishing company, uh, Balboa Press. And they are now going through all of the necessary uh, items that they need to do, the, the process that they need to complete uh, in order to make the book available to me, to make the book available to you. So because it's not available, others are asking for more information concerning chapter three, quantify the value. Firstly, I wanna thank you for tuning in to Women in Ministry TV. I want to invite you to listen to all of the other ministers who are part of this platform. I thank God for the visionary of this platform. We share the same name. We're not the same person. Her name is Jacqueline Battle as well, but she lives, resides in Montgomery, Alabama. So I just want to give a shout out to her for providing this platform of women in ministry TV. So as we go further, quantify the value. I'm reminded of some experiences of my youth and young adulthood, which is why this particular part of the chapter is so important to me. This week we discuss quantify your birthright. And this is still in the chapter of quantify value, but others have asked me to expound on this particular chapter. So I'll go further. There's a part that talks about quantify your birthright. We talked about quantify meaning measure the way in which you are measuring, the, the term that you're going to use to measure, the resource that you use to measure. And of course, we understand that birthright is very important. In fact, if you look at the book of Genesis and the story of Esau and Jacob, we find that Esau devalued his birthright, not just his long-term birthright, but he devalued the, the immediate market of his birthright because he had was considered to be the birthright of the firstborn. So he didn't have to bargain with his, with his younger brother concerning what it was that he had a value that um, Esau wanted. He didn't have to bargain with Jacob in that way because there, there was an ancient understanding as concerning the birthright of the firstborn. There were advantages to being the firstborn. And so literally he had a right of possession that came along with just being born as the eldest son. So he could have said to Jacob, listen, I just came in from hunting. I've been hunting all afternoon. I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. You've got these lentils here and I'm gonna help myself. Now you can serve me or I'm going to help myself because he had a certain birthright. It was a certain understanding to protocol during those days, but he didn't recognize, he didn't value his birthright. He wasn't secure in the understanding of his birthright. Later on, of course, um, the birthright and its advantages became more and more defined. And we understand that 
of course, they could function in the, in the priesthood. Um, they got a double portion. They, they succeeded the father officially in authority, even when the father was, was alive. They would be second in command, sort of like jo uh, Joseph was second in command to the Pharaoh of Egypt. So because he didn't recognize his, the immediate value of his birthright, he hadn't even considered the long-term value of his birthright and what that would bring. I am reminded myself of days of my youth when I didn't value my birthright. My mother was a single parent and during those days, there was a serious stigma that was attached to single parenthood and the children of single parents really suffer during those days. The majority of single parents were women in those days. And there was, there was they, they developed a certain name just from being single. Uh, they were ostracized, um, scowled at by other married women. And there were stories that went around that were circulated by married men and single men as well. So it, 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 we just really had a difficult time as the children of single parents. And I was invited to be a part of the debutante court. And at that time, there was very influential uh, invitation. And in my mind, I had such an esteem issue because of all the little whispers and all the little innuendos that were scurrying about concerning myself, my identity, and my mother's singlehood. So when I was asked to be a part, I immediately felt less than, because there's an invitation that goes out initially to those who have been chosen first. And then there's an invitation that goes out when they need someone to stand in, when it's a last minute uh, invitation, one where they got to fill a spot. And that was the invitation that I received. And instead of me understanding that regardless to, to the way that the opportunity came to me, it was still an opportunity for me to meet certain people that I would have never met, doors that were open to opportunities and interviews for me uh, and accolades that would go on to, to open doors for me and create privilege and favor for me. It was God's way of favoring me. But the only thing that I could see was the esteem issues that I was dealing with. And, and I didn't recognize the value of my birthright. You see, firstly, my mother was a daughter of the most high God. She was a righteous woman of God. And the word of God tells me, matter of fact, it's written, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. As a righteous woman of God, my mother cast favor onto her children. So I had a certain amount of favor because of my birthright. At that time, I didn't recognize it. Also, when I was in high school, I had accepted Christ as my savior prior to this event. So not only did I have the favor that came from my birthright of being the daughter of a righteous woman, but I had the birthright of being daughter of the most high God had missed out completely on the power and the value of my birthright. See, in order for me to understand the future value of my birthright and how God had already set up plans for me, he had thoughts towards me of peace and not of evil to give me an expected end according to Jeremiah 29, 11. In order for me to recognize that and benefit from the favor that had been provided for me, I needed to understand right then my immediate value, the immediate value of my birthright. To determine the future value of something, you have to first calculate the present value. And you use that present value to help you determine the future value. Quantify the value of your birthright. It's essential that we do that as sons and daughters of God. And the reason why is essential, again, 
is because if we allow the immediate value of our birthright to escape us, we lose our identity. We devalue our identity. And of course, we discussed before, anything that we devalue, just like in the story of Esau, we lose. We lose it. If you've got clothes in your closet that you've now devalued, they're no longer valuable to you, you don't use them anymore, chances are you would gather those clothes, put them in a, in a container, and give them away because you have now devalued them. Relationships that we devalue, we lose because we don't cultivate them. We have to put into circulation every person, place, thing, opportunity that we've been afforded. And as we place it into circulation, it gains value. It becomes currency that can now increase of, in substance, but we've got to place it into circulation. Once we understand the value of our birthright, we then place it into circulation. We begin to work that birthright. We begin to go forth in faith understanding that there's a certain favor upon our life. There's a certain value to the birthright in which we stand. And as we put it into circulation by faith, meaning that we go forward understanding that certain doors are going to open for you because you've got a birthright. Quantify not just the present value of your birthright, but the future value of your birthright. Now, the way that this fits into all of the other chapters is last week we talked about quantifying relationships. We talked about quantifying the value of certain seasons in our lives and certain answers that we've received from the Lord. And we're aware of them, but we're not working those answers by putting them into circulation. I want to remind us, as I minister to my young self, that we have to remember there's no failure in God. We can ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the vast quantity of our birthright. And he'll begin to, to bring to our remembrance some things, some experiences that we've gone through. See, whether you are or have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior or not, you have a birthright as a member of the human race. You have a birthright. You can start right there, right there, contemplating the present value of your birthright as a member of the human race. And then you can move forward to place your perspective on what your future value could be just as a member of the human race. But I'd like to invite you not to just stop there. I'd like to invite you to become a son, a daughter of the most high God. I'd like to invite you if you haven't already to accept Christ as your savior. He is the firstborn, the firstborn of all those who are a part of the righteousness of God in Christ by faith. Matter of fact, all of us have been enveloped, baptized into Christ Jesus, our Passover lamb. And as we are in this week of unleavened bread, as we have gone through the Passover, and we are now in during this time of unleavened bread, when we're ridding our hearts and our minds and our souls and our perspectives of those things that that are so far from our actual identity as the birthright of the most high God. I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me and I will be brief. Most high God, we thank you so much that you are the great I am. We ask you that you would save us right now by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to get in touch with a faith-filled organization. I want you to begin to meditate on the word of God day and night 
observing to do all according to that is written therein. Let the Holy Spirit begin to transform your perspective of your birthright. He'll give you an understanding of your birthright. I want you to begin to look at that word of God as a mirror, a mirror that will reflect the true you, your true self in Christ Jesus. If you want some suggestions, I'm going to always suggest Oakwood Seventh Day Adventist Church, but there are several other churches that I would suggest as well. One in Christ International, great organization, and there are several others. So if you want some suggestions, reach out to me. I would suggest also that you find some place to be baptized. Here's why. Because the word of God tells us that there are three that bear witness in this earth. The Father, the, word, the blood, the water, and the spirit in the earth. Three bear witness in heaven, the Father, the word, the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 18 tells us that when two or three shall agree on earth, as in touching anything, they shall actually be done for them by the Father, which is in heaven. In that same chapter, it says, out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Well, when you get baptized, you get enveloped into water, like we've been enveloped or baptized into Christ Jesus. When you get baptized in that water, that water bears witness. Scientists have discovered that water is a, reco a recorder. It literally has a memory. It has a vibration. It has a voice. And as you are baptized, it goes forth as a vibration in indicating and signifying your birthright in the kingdom of God. So I would invite you not just to accept Christ as your savior, but if you just prayed that prayer, you want to be baptized. And from that point, you don't stop. You continue to renew your mind and transform your perspective of yourself by looking in that mirror of the word of God every day to give you more of an understanding of the future value of your birthright as well, excuse me, the present value of your birthright as well as the future value of your birthright. Again, this week we expounded more on chapter three of my book, Messages to My Young Self. Chapter one, understand the season and the purpose of that season. Chapter two, ask the right questions. Chapter three, Quantify the value. And this week we discussed quantify the value of your birthright. Present value and future value. Again, thank you so much for tuning in to Women in Ministry TV. I am Jacqueline Battle. And as you can see, going across the screen, if you don't see it now, you'll see it in a future recording. Uh, going across the screen is the information as to how you can donate into Women in Ministry TV. Also, if you need to reach out to us during our prayer line, that information will also be scrolling across the screen. If you don't see it in this particular recording, as it's edited, you'll see it in the future. We are here for you. You can reach out to us at any time. And we are here to intercede, to pray for you, to fast and pray. Uh, we've got several resources uh, in this ministry. We've got doctors, we've got attorneys, we've got authors, we've got teachers, we've got preachers, we've got evangelists, we've got apostles, uh, we've got uh, counselors, we've got psychiatrists, we've got authors. Whatever you need, we've got it here in Women in Ministry TV. So thank you again for tuning in. I'm Jacqueline Battle. And you've joined us for another week of message to my young self. Thank you so much. And as always, have a good life.